Hey guys, today we get a new general announcement. Godfrey of Bullion. Uh, I ran his stats, looked at his numbers. We're going to get into that later. But this update, we've got a couple new things. We've got the new general, Godfrey. Uh, I like him so far, he looks pretty interesting. And then we have some new events. Uh, this is event right here. The Peak Trial event. Now, essentially what it's going to be is it has these three generals right here, and you're going to get to claim these rewards for each stage of them. I got each of them, upgraded them to one star, and claimed the first stage rewards. Uh, I'm assuming it's probably going to be another stage for each star, all the way up to five stars, and then probably red stars after that, if I would assuming. The rewards seem to be pretty nice. So if you have a copy of these guys just laying around and you can uh, just throw them all the way up to five regular stars, it's probably worth the investment. Uh, we have this event right here, the Historic General Gather, which ties directly into it. If you want to spend money, you can buy these Ascending Packages and then you can redeem these three specific generals. So if you want a coin, you can get them from here. I haven't looked into the cost, like real dollars per how many fragments, how much I have to spend to get these guys to full ascension, but yeah, that's there if you want a coin. The other one is we've got an update for the Trial of Knights event. Now the generals in this used to be different, but it looks like they've changed them out. We still have Elise, uh, we have Arlian, Polygenus, and Loudon. For some reason we don't have Douglas in here, which would make sense considering the other event, but we have Loudon in here instead. So fresh generals in here, that's kind of nice to see gives us a little bit extra wiggle room. Now, let's uh, look at some of these guys and determine how we're gonna, you know, which ones we're gonna wanna invest in. First off, we're gonna look at the ground general side of it. Now we're gonna be looking at Arlian versus Elise. Who's gonna perform better and which one is worth investing in. If you've already started investing in Elise, definitely continue that. Don't break off and switch to Arlian, it's not worth it. So when we compare Elise and Arlian, we can see Elise and Arlian are pretty similar for damage, uh, pretty similar for defense. Arlian has the edge in hit points, and then in march size, Elise is going to pull out on top. Arlian has 0% march size. Now, I think that for most purposes, Elise is the better all-around ground general, and she's the one that she should invest in. If you're looking for a ground march that is more survivable for some reason, then Arlian can be used for that, and it, it is an option. On the assistant side of things, looking there, Arlian still is pretty high for the hit point stat category. Elise and Arlian pretty much the same for the damage. Uh, Elise's hit points it catches up to Arlene as an assistant, and the defense is it's uh, pretty much non-existent for both of them. So neither of them make very good assistants, but if that's what you got, that's what you got. So, you know, it's, that's how it'd be. Let's look at the effective damages real quick. This one is with the March size book on the main general, K40, 2000% buff. Uh, we can see that Elise comes in 6th overall, and Arlene is way down here behind Meta Trajan and Yuffie as free generals. So if overall March, definitely Elise, Arlene, he can be useful for uh, hit point focus March, but that's pretty much it for those two. Okay, next we're going to look at the mounted generals that we get to compare, Polygenus and Loudon. Now let's just find them on this list real quick. Here is Loudon, and Polygenus is right over here. So damage stats, pretty similar. Polygenus has a slight edge. Uh, Polygenus wins in terms of defense. HP Polygenus wins, though. Polygenus is going to be more survivable. 10% uh, march size is not bad for Polygenus. 14% march size for Loudon, so slight edge there. So overall, they're pretty comparable. The only thing that really stands out is that uh, Polygenus has a more survivable mount. March. Let's take a look at the effective damages real quick. Let's look at this K40 March. Uh, we got Polygenus up here in sixth place, 
Loudon up here in fourth place. So they're pretty uh, similar in terms of damage overall. Not a huge difference right there. Honestly, either of them, not a bad choice, whichever one you choose to use. Uh, in terms of survivability, Polygenus has the edge. And personally, I think that I would prefer Polygenus for that factor since their damage stats are just so close. I think he wins. There is another use for Loudon that's pretty interesting. Uh, and that's as an assistant. Because if we find Loudon on here, he has 60 defense and 50 HP, which is pretty balanced across these both categories. And those are pretty good defensive stats for an assistant. And his attack stat is pretty nice here as well. And the reason I bring this up for the assistant stats is because I think he would be a very good assistant for Jayava Man. If we look at these numbers I ran over here, uh, this is for the survivability. And this is going to be the total HP and defense combined for each one. And these calculations are for rounds to kill, but I didn't really see anything super conclusive with this limited testing. I think the general safe is uh, the higher this number, the better it's going to be for survivability. And we can see that if we pair Javman and Lina Mosa, that's the highest. But we sacrifice 5% and use Loudon instead. If we look at Loudon versus Lina Mosa, Lina Mosa has very nice HP, low defense, but his attack is 60. And neither of these two can take the attack book, so that's not really a factor in this. And Lina Mosa has 0% march size. So I think Loudon is the better assistant than Lina Mosa for Java Man. So if you have Java Man and you need looking for an assistant, I would definitely recommend Loudon to pair with them. And lastly, we are going to look at the two generals that you're going to have to coin for if you want to get them. Douglas and Godfrey. Now let's look how Godfrey stacks up overall. Skill based, we got 40 attack, 10 defense, 40 HP. Uh, pretty standard attack, uh, standard skills, nothing really crazy there. Uh, interesting to see if he's going to be compatible with the attack book. That's going to be a big indicator of how he performs. So keep your eyes out for that, his compatibility. Uh, upgrading to one star, the investment isn't, isn't terrible. Nothing really special there. Five stars, pretty average across the board. Specialty, specialty's pretty much average, honestly. And overall, he doesn't really have anything that stands out as super crazy. Something that does look pretty nice is he is a pretty survivable general. So if you're looking for a more survivable archer general, that's definitely a, an option. Let's compare how that stacks up to uh, Douglas. Here he is. Douglas has the same size march, about 20% higher damage, so he's going to be more uh, aggressive in that area. The health stats are, they're not super far apart, but Godfrey definitely has the edge in that. So if you're looking for more uh, survival-focused archer march, Godfrey is your choice. If you want the pure damage, uh, Douglas is definitely the one you want to choose. I would say that I think Douglas is the better all-around choice since attack is pretty important for archers. Let's take a look at the effective damages overall real quick. Now this is how Godfrey stacks up. I ran this number here because that's what was in the calculator. Uh, that's plugged in for a T12 march with uh, these numbers right here. The reason I didn't run this number is because I have no idea what march I ran this on last time. So I don't, I don't really know. But if we look at this T12 march, uh, we can see he's not terrible. He stacks up pretty good. But he's not super ahead of Electra, which is going to be our like free general. That is our go-to, her or Winfield Scott. So his damage isn't really anything outstanding. I would expect to see him in this category. Reasonably close to where Douglas is, but lagging about behind a few spots. If we look for this march, whichever one this is, it's probably, if I had to guess, uh, probably based off of T14s, either like K35 to K40, somewhere in there. So something along that range, pretty advanced into the game. We can see that for overall damage, Douglas comes in second, right behind Martin. And as we know, Martin really only works in SPS. A lot of his buffs are based on that. So Douglas is the highest damage archer general that you can get. And he's definitely the one that I would recommend if you're looking to coin. 
So very good option right there. But if you want something just a little bit more survivable, like I said, Godfrey is a pretty solid choice as well. Now let's see if either of these are really any good for assistance. If you look at Douglas, he's got 101, 6, 10, and 50. So nothing really crazy, pretty standard across the board as we see. Looking at the assistant damages, Douglas comes pretty low. He's not great. He's he's a solid assistant, but he's not the best in slot. Charles or Elaner are going to be your best in slot assistants. You can't use one of those. Louis the Ninth. These guys definitely are dominating the assistant category. And if we look at Godfrey, as we know, for assistants, we're only going to have the skill base and then the specialty. So we're going to be looking at 90 for attack, 40 for defense, and 70 for HP. So pretty survivable, nothing really crazy for damage, and 0% march, 6% uh, march size, excuse me. So nothing too crazy. He'd probably be a decent assistant. Now, let's talk about his uh, covenant. The covenant for Godfrey is really weird. Let's go look at it in game, actually. All right, here's the covenant. Range troop defense, range troop training capacity, nothing crazy. Defending range troop attack. Defending clause, uh, that's a little bit interesting. March speed, range troop siege machine attack. Defending range troop, defending range troop. In city, in city, in city. So you can see where I'm going with this. This is... These clauses are kind of interesting. We have in-city, and we have defending that are prevalent on a lot of these. So in-city, obviously, is only going to work when they're the the defense general. Defending? I'm not sure if that's talking about as the defense general, in which case I would assume they would say in-city, or if it just means that like you're getting attacked on a tile or something. Because if you're camped in a building, then attacking clauses work in that building, even if you are the one that is defending it. So it's not talking about that. Maybe this clause is talking about reinforcing other players. I'm not really sure. But I don't have any way to test the reinforcing at the moment. So if you know how to test this clause to see in what situations it would be active, I would appreciate uh, some insight on that. But it looks, it looks just pretty weird overall. And for most cases, you're not going to be able to use really any of these at all. There is one very niche use case in which I can see uh, some use for this. With all the in-city uh, fucking clauses, if you have a very archer-dependent defense and you're absolutely insane for some reason, you, you could throw them on the wall technically. Because his... Uh, Leadership step is just leading the army, so he could work as a defense general. If you wanted to do that, that is an option. I probably wouldn't recommend it, but the option is there. Overall, I like this update pretty good. They gave us some more options as free-to-play players with the new generals in the Trial of Knights event. To pay to win generals, they're whatever. Uh, Godfrey, not a bad new general. He's not super broken OP or anything. He's, he's a little bit weird with some of the clauses, but not a bad choice either. I think they uh, did a decent job balancing him. So yeah, that's all I got for today, and I'll catch you on the next one.